Each month, I have the great privilege of hosting a small group of diplomats, scientists, lawyers, religious leaders, and all of them are deeply involved in international nuclear weapons negotiations. I'd like you to meet these people, and then I'd like you to hear the prayer that we say whenever we get together. I am Bill Perry. I'm a professor emeritus in the engineering school at Stanford University. I was the 19th Secretary of Defense of the United States, and before that, the Director of Defense Research and Engineering. My experiences through the years with nuclear weapons have made an indelible impression on me and convinced me that these immensely powerful weapons threaten no less than our own civilization. This has led me to make the primary task of my life working to ensure that they will never, ever be used again. My name is Sidney Drill. I am a scientist, a physicist. Beyond my academic teaching and research career, I have spent many years as an advisor to the United States government on technical national security issues and nuclear weapons in particular. I recognize their almost unimaginable destructive potential and their capacity for destroying the human race. This is a capacity far beyond what we were created to acquire. And therefore, I believe and work to get rid of these weapons as soon as practical before they destroy humanity. My name is George Shultz, former Secretary of State under President Ronald Reagan. And this is my own prayer. Dear God, please bring common sense and divine guidance to our work on the problems that nuclear weapons pose to our world. Man has invented a means to destroy us all. We must eliminate these weapons in order to preserve a sane and peaceful world. We pray for your help as we work toward this goal. I am Ambassador James Goodby, and the bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki have shaped my soul and my professional life from my participation in the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty to my present efforts at seeking to dismantle, jointly with the Russians, the nuclear weapons legacy of the Cold War. President Kennedy said, here on Earth, God's work must truly be our own. I think that God's work is to rid the world of the present nuclear threat. I am Monica Willard. The issue of eliminating nuclear weapons has shaped my life as a peace activist and as the representative of the United Religions Initiative to the United Nations. Knowing that nuclear weapons can be used by choice or accident and that they have the capacity to destroy our planet and everything we love calls me to action. A world without nuclear weapons is protection for the love of our children, grandchildren, and future generations, for the beauty of the natural world, for a safer future, I offer this prayer. I'm Jonathan Granoff. As a young man interning for a congressman, I met then Senator Robert Kennedy. He told us how close we came to destroying civilization during the Cuban Missile Crisis. He told us that Eliminating nuclear weapons before they eliminate us is the practical and moral litmus test of our time. For many decades since, I've worked as an activist, an international lawyer, and a human being to rid the world of this threat. We need each other to do this, and we need God's grace. I am Ambassador Thomas Graham, first with the Soviet Union, and later with countries all over the world. I have participated in arms limitation policy development and negotiations on behalf of the United States of America. Always the overarching objective has been to control and eventually eliminate all nuclear weapons. And although much has been achieved in the past 70 years, the sword of mass destruction still hangs precariously over our heads. As long as there is breath in my lungs, an urgency in my heart, I intend to do all in my power to banish these ungodly weapons from the face of the earth. 
The beginning and the end are in your hands, O creator of the universe. And in our hands you have placed the fate of this planet. We who are tested by having both creative and destructive power in our free will turn to you in sober fear and in intoxicating hope. We ask for your guidance and we wish to share in your imagination as we deliberate about nuclear force. Help us to lift the fog of atomic darkness that hovers so pervasively over our Earth, your Earth, so that soon all eyes may see life magnified by your pure light. Bless all of us who wait today for your presence and who dedicate ourselves to achieve your intended peace and rightful equilibrium on Earth. In the name of all that is holy and all that is hoped. Amen. Amen. Today, the doomsday clock stands at three minutes till midnight, the highest level ever recorded. Instead of global alarm and efforts at reduction, the opposite is happening. Nuclear nations are quietly gearing up to modernize and create new and more powerful nuclear weapons. Rogue nations are neglecting their citizens in favor of advancing their nuclear status. Rogue terrorist groups are frantically trying to obtain nuclear materials and weapons. Nuclear weapons are built to be used sooner or later. But rather than stepping back from the brink, the world is dashing to plunge over the cliff. In this moment of nuclear madness, what can we do? The nuclear experts whom I know pray. They live into the direction that their prayers take them. They become advocates, and they join with others to build a global voice of nuclear abolition. We invite you to do the same. Our little group is called Voices for a World Free of Nuclear Weapons, and we are part of the United Religions Initiative. If we can help you find your voice, feel free to reach out to us at uri.org. In case you think that your moral, spiritual voice is in the minority, please know every major religious group in the world has called for the abolition of nuclear weapons. Follow the prayer that is in your soul. Raise your voice. Save the world.